And as Nicole said, we wanted to start out this debate with giving you both a chance to set the record straight on some of the allegations that have been made during the campaign. So Assemblymember Kiley, you have been portrayed in campaign ads as supporting a near total ban on abortions. Is that in fact your position? And also, would you vote for Senator Lindsey Graham's proposal for a federal ban on most abortions after 15 weeks of gestation? Uh, the answer to both of those is no. Um, I think it's a state issue and I'm running for a United States office. Uh, the Sacramento Bee did a fact check on my opponent's ads. They found that he was lying, and yet he continued to do the ads. And he's basically run a single issue campaign around this one issue. By the way, his own view on the issue is one that about 95% of the public uh, uh, does not support. He favors uh, full uh, elective abortion right up until the moment of birth. And so why is he fixating on this one issue, though? He has no plans for uh, dealing with inflation, getting gas and grocery prices under control. He has no plans for securing the border. He has no plans for getting crime under control. And the reason he doesn't is because he supported all of the policies that led to these problems. He supported the $4 trillion spending spree that Nancy Pelosi rammed through Congress. He supported it every step of the way, and he began his campaign by saying his goal is to keep his party in power, keep Pelosi as speaker, so we can have even more of that. I don't think we need to keep going down the direction we're going right now. I think we need a new direction as a country. We need cha change, and we need balance in our government. So the, the, question was to, the question was designed. Let me just, first of all, right. get you on the record for exactly where you stand in terms of your opposition to abortions. You said you don't support a near total ban. So for voters in your district, where exactly do you draw that line? There's nothing I do as a member of Congress that would in any way affect what's allowed in California. This is a state issue, and so the level of access that exists right now will not be affected by anything I do as a member of Congress. You don't want to state exactly where you might uh, have ex exemptions, exceptions? Well, it's a state issue, so I wouldn't be voting to restrict anything as a member of Congress. All right, Dr. And one of the things that I think my opponent and I do agree with is that Congress is broken, Washington's broken, and politicians uh, like him are broken. I think the reality is there were so many lies that were just thrown out in the last uh, two minutes, it's kind of hard to actually respond to them, uh, but I'll try to do the best I can. One never said anything uh, that he said with respect to keeping uh, the Democrats in power. I think in reality, both sides are broken. We have one side that focuses on things like defunding the police, and then we have the other side, like my opponent, that focuses on trying to lie their way through an election. Uh, he did uh, have an opportunity to vote on strengthening uh, the right to abortion in California and making a constitutional amendment, voted against it. He had an opportunity to make it so that women would not be criminalized for miscarriages. He voted against it. Uh, what he could do, other than trying to run on a single issue with respect to the gas tax, having actually gotten nothing done, uh, that's the criticism. The criticism is he runs on issues, runs for office, costs us $240 million, which, by the way, would have bought about 60 million gallons of gas, which would have been about enough to pay for about the gas for about a quarter of the people in our district. Instead of focusing on the things that keeps him running for office, he focuses on those things okay. uh, that divide people. That's and why that's we time. need something.